Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, Cool City Avionics receives FAA TSO for Autopilot Family. EASA moves to revive general aviation, and EASA certifies the Challenger 350. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Cool City Avionics has announced that it has received FAA Technical Standard Order authorization for its new family of helicopter autopilots. The TSO includes the HAP100 2-axis autopilot, the HFC100 2-axis autopilot with stability control and augmentation systems known as SCAS, the HAP150 3-axis autopilot, the HFC150 3-axis autopilot with SCAS, and the HFC and HAP150 LE models. The LE models add an orbit mode specifically designed for law enforcement and electronic news gathering helicopters. According to Cool City Avionics, these new products are the first professional grade certified autopilots that are affordable for installation in small to medium sized helicopters, and they're being offered at introductory prices. The STC for installation in the Robinson R44 is expected shortly, and STC projects are already underway or planned for the Robinson R66, the Airbus AS350, Sikorsky's S61, Airbus's EC120 and EC130, and the Bell 206 and 407 models. Derivative autopilots for airplanes are now in development for delivery in 2015. The European Aviation Safety Agency's annual safety conference to be held in Rome starting on October 15th is likely to be one of the most important ever for general aviation in Europe, according to IAOPA Europe, which plans a strong presence. The conference, which has GA as its focus, comes at a time when the wind of change is running through EASA following the appointment of Patrick Kai as executive director. There's an increasing acceptance that GA is overregulated to the point where its economic survival is compromised and that a new and more proportionate approach is urgently required. The conference will examine EASA's ongoing efforts towards creating a simpler, lighter, better regulatory framework for general aviation. It's encouraging to see the positive European attitude towards the benefits of keeping general aviation strong. In contrast, we continue to see an FAA in the United States that shows disinterest and lethargy where GA is concerned. When we come back, the Challenger 350 gets its EASA certification. You're watching Airborne. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news spy at aero news.net. EASA has granted full type certification to Bombardier for the Challenger 350 business jet. Eric Martel, president of Bombardier Business Aircraft, said in part, quote, Our Challenger 350 aircraft made its European debut at the Farnborough Air Show in July. With certification now in hand, we're eager to start delivering EASA registered units for our customers." End quote. The Challenger 350 aircraft is powered by new twin Honeywell HTF 7350 engines, each producing 7,323 pounds of thrust. In addition, the aircraft benefits from increased aerodynamic efficiency with its new canted winglets. Bombardier claims the Challenger 350, with full seats and fuel, has a range of 3,200 nautical miles. The Challenger 350 cockpit is equipped with Rockwell Collins ProLine 21 Advanced Avionics System. Well, thank goodness it's Friday. 
It's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. Today, Jim talks about the FAA's attempt to regulate hangar contents and how it's devoid of common sense. As a matter of fact, it seems to be nothing but a power grab. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. One really has to wonder what's on the minds of the folks in power at the FAA these days. After the incredibly disappointing performance of Administrator Michael Huerta at Oshkosh when everybody thought that the only way for him to escape out of there without a major skirmish was to announce some manner of acceptance or approval for the third class medical. Instead, Administrator Huerta stood up and started talking about the process, started talking about the bureaucracy, started talking about all the things they wanted to do, but they had to do it right. And their right is to worship at the feet of the bureaucracy and to do everything the bureaucratic way. I've got a problem with all this, and the biggest problem is the fact that they serve the bureaucracy, but they don't serve the community. They serve their own rules, but they don't serve the world of aviation. They serve what makes their system work rather than figuring out how to make the system work for the people they are supposed to serve, i.e. the taxpayers, i.e. the pilots, i.e. the aviation professionals, i.e. the aviation businesses, all get swept away. And with a recent uh, look at a hangar use policy where the FAA wants to exert extraordinary control over what you might do with your hangar or a leased hangar or a hangar on leased property or a number of other different permutations, I mean, it's at a point now where they're trying to decide is what's an aeronautical use. And an airplane may be an aeronautical use. An airplane under some mode of construction may be under aeronautical use, but only if you're far enough along the way that it looks like an airplane. Say what? Since when is the FAA going to be the arbiter of what does and does not work in our hangars? Now, I understand there's some heartburn with folks who throw their boats and everything out in these hangars and don't do anything with aviation. And that's a legitimate complaint to be dealt with on a local level by people utilizing common sense. Yeah, I know the common sense is a big deal in the FAA world because, well, they don't use it. But under the rules as they stand, as they're trying to put forth right now, the little refrigerator you have for your Coca-Colas may be illegal, may get you booted out of your hangar. Somebody even made the note that the flag on a hangar wall could be a non-aeronautical use and get you booted. If you bring your car in and put it under the wing of your Cessna while you're working on it, that may be a non-aeronautical use. If you keep a motorcycle or a golf cart to go running around the airport. I mean, come on, guys. The fact of the matter is, is that aviation is a community. We do a lot by our hangars, with our hangars. We have a lot of fun in our hangars. It is a center point for a lot of aviation activity, and the FAA wants to strangle it. This rule, as it sets, this NPRM that's being uh, put forward, this comment period, folks, this thing needs to be thrown out. It's a ridiculous document that demonstrates more of a bureaucratic mentality, which means a total lack of common sense, a total lack of understanding of what general aviation and aviation usage is all about. And one more time, it's a power grab. And it's a power grab by people who should serve us and not the other way around. Michael Huerta, I understand you're a good guy. Um, I've heard lots of good things about you as a human being. But, sir, you're not serving the aviation community. Sir, you are doing things that are destroying the aviation community. And the fact of the matter is this. We don't want it. And in many cases, a lot of the things that you're doing, we don't need. Keep this up, and we're going to find a way to build an aviation outside of the FAA because the FAA is nobody's friend in the world of aviation. The hangar use policy document is certainly proof of that. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. The Aeroscraft Corporation's 40D Sky Dragon airship vehicle's envelope is now filled with more than 100,000 cubic feet of helium, helping to ready the 150-foot-plus vehicle for test flights in Tustin, California, prior to its international service deployment. The 40D Sky Dragon airship supports numerous airborne intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions, providing a quiet and stable aerial platform with long endurance and slow loiter capabilities. The flexible 40D Sky Dragon features stronger and lighter envelope fabrics that improve helium and permeability, 
a fly-by-wire flight control system providing exceptional maneuverability and control, and reduced requirements for ground handling personnel. Eros is a technology innovator now pioneering the creation of an airship fleet. The airship will soon be delivered overseas for multi-role operations beginning this fall. When we come back, the CAF Air Show's 51st annual event will be held in October in Midland, Texas. Stay tuned. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. Mark your calendar now for the CAF Air Show to be held on October 11th and 12th. The 51st annual event will be held at Midland International Airport, located between Midland and Odessa, Texas. Air Show 2014 will include the West Texas debut of Kyle Franklin's new air show act, Dracula, The Rise of Vackel. Franklin's unique biplane and routine is one of the most sought-after acts on the airshow circuit. Complementing the high-flying action will be the CAF Red Tail Squadron's Rise Above Traveling Exhibit. The exhibit, which is housed in a custom-designed semi-trailer, includes a 160-degree panoramic screen in a 30-seat temperature-controlled movie theater for showing the movie Rise Above about the famed Tuskegee Airmen. The best warbird show in America will feature aircraft from the CAF Flying Fleet, including the B-29 Fifi, two B-17 Flying Fortresses, the Tuskegee Airmen Red Tail P-51 Mustang, and the reenactment performance of Tora Tora Tora. The U.S. Department of Transportation announced that it will require additional time to reach a decision on Norwegian Air International's application for a foreign carrier permit to serve the U.S. from Europe. Until then, Norwegian Air Shuttle will continue to operate flights to the U.S. under its existing authority from DOT. This action is not a denial. Norwegian Air Shuttle already holds a permit to fly between Europe and the U.S., and Norwegian Air Shuttle's existing operations to the U.S. are not affected by today's announcement. As ANN has reported in the past, both flight attendant and pilots unions have argued against issuing the permit to Norwegian Air International. Their opposition is based on what they claim are business practices on the part of the carrier that lead to unfair competition. Flight attendants union APFA called the move by the DOT a significant victory for the American aviation industry and the workers that support it. We'll keep you updated as these proceedings continue. A wish of a lifetime will be delivered tomorrow, September 6th, during a special visit honoring one of the last remaining Tuskegee Airmen of World War II at the Commemorative Air Force's Southern California Wing Air Museum based at Camarillo Airport. For several years, 93-year-old Lieutenant Colonel Marion Rod Rogers has talked about wanting to climb back into a P-51 Mustang fighter, just like he flew during World War II on 69 combat missions over Nazi-occupied Europe. The Wish of a Lifetime Foundation in Denver, Colorado, teamed up with Brookdale Senior Living Incorporated to make it happen. They contacted the CAF Southern California Wing to see if the Air Museum's flyable restored P-51 Mustang, Man of War, would be available, and the answer was yes. Raj and his caregiver will travel to California for the scheduled Saturday P-51 flight and planned honors at the wing. Other Tuskegee Airmen and the general public have also been invited to participate in the honor ceremony. Well, that's our show for September 5th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories 
anytime at aero-news.net. Remember to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. And be advised, there are some great upgrades and changes coming soon. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.